Hi, welcome back. I'm Lisa with Candles by Sincerely Ice Blue. If you're new to the channel, here we talk about making candles, selling candles, and everything in between. Love to have you hit that subscribe button, become part of the channel and the family, and join along with all the fun. Today, we're going to talk about getting set up for making your candles, and also we're going to talk about some different examples of testing, and take a look at what it is we're looking for when we're testing, and some of the different results, and go from there. Let's take a look. Just to give you an idea of what it looks like when we're getting set up to do testing. When I'm testing, I like to do at least three. So these little groupings right here, we've already got one or two candles ready. And on these ones, we have some new fragrances we're gonna be testing and a new vessel. And it just goes to show you, I take over my whole kitchen when I'm doing testing. This is the Pro Blend 600. And you can see that it comes in large chunks and we are using a vegetable chopper to chunk it up so that we can melt it. Now, if you don't have a vegetable chopper, it also works well. If you have a flathead screwdriver, a spatula, anything you can use to break this up. There, time to cure. These are all older candles that we have been working on burn testing with. And you can see this one here. These have all been burning for four hours. You can see it's giving off some wisps of black smoke. There's a lot of soot around the rim and the burn pool is all the way to the bottom, which says it is burning way too hot. You can also see that there's a big carbon ball in that one. So that one is no good. The next one, you can see a smoother burn pool. The flame's only flickering because I've snuck up on it. The depth of the burn pool is about right for four hours. There's no sooting. That one may be doing well. This one here we have in a mug and you can see that there's a lot of soot around the edges. There's a huge carbon ball. That one is a no-go. This one here, the flame's been doing real well. There's a little bit of tunneling, and on this one, we are on burn four. And I'm not going to worry too much about it yet, but it was running well till today with that little bit of tunneling, so we'll keep an eye on that one. This one here is also on burn four and you can see a larger carbon ball on that the burn pool is pretty deep this one here is on burn about seven or eight i'm not sure because i can't flip the page over at the moment but you can get an idea this one's been burning well there's no tunneling, there's a little bit of a carbon ball on this one, but there is no sooting, no black smoke. I take that back, there's a tiny bit of sooting on that. Didn't see it till I walked around the edge. This one here is on burn five, and you can see that there is a larger carbon ball on that. It does seem to be burning pretty hot. There's no sooting around the edges. Ooh, and that one right there over there, you could see it was just black smoking. But this one's doing all right. And then our last one has been, this is actually burn 15 or so. We were just burning this one down for the overall burn time. So that gives you an idea of what it looks like for all of these. And like I said, these are all somewhere between their fourth and 15th burn time. On this one, we are doing a tea light test. When you're testing on tea lights, you're gonna light the wick and you're gonna let it burn until it puts itself out and then record the amount of time that took. What I'm looking for is I'm looking at the melt pool, how long it took to achieve, which on a tea light is pretty fast. Um, hard to see through the container I have it in. But you can see the flame is a decent size. It's fairly small. 
There's no black soot coming off of it. And until I was standing here, it was not wavering. And it does have a good throw, believe it or not, that little tea light. I'm in my office and my room smells like the scent. So that's fantastic. Another thing I'm looking for is I want to make sure that my wick stays adhered to the bottom. And I had a, another one at one point that did not. The wick stickers I was using were terrible. And when it get to the bottom like this, it would melt and it would just float the wick all over the inside of the container. So that is testing on a tea light. All right, I just found one of those that I just told you about. See that wick sticker floating around in there and how the wick came unattached from the bottom of my candle? That is no good. And you can see it barely burned. It only burned about a half, not even, before that came apart and put itself out. But that could be a fire hazard had that been in a customer's home. That flame could have gotten large, it could have touched the side of the container and started a fire. So I'm going to have to look through because this is one that was in that batch where we use those dots that do not work. All right, and here is the other tea light that we have tested. And you can kind of see that the top of it has a carbon ball. So this one is burning a little hot. This is a sample of some of my candles that I have curing. So if you take a look at the top, you can see they're nice and smooth. And on the top of them, you'll see various ways to secure the wick. This one here, has a knot, little notch that I can slide the wick into, and that keeps it nice and firm and taut. You don't want the wick to be wiggling around so that when you pour the wax, you get a curve in your wick. And you can see these are examples of the curing we were talking about. I've got the candles labeled so I know what's what and I can record my results. So there it is, a whole bunch of different pieces, parts in regards to testing, testing, testing. And I've been doing an awful lot of that this week as I gear up to get closer to open my store. And until the last couple of weeks, I didn't really understand how important testing was. And I think I was doing what a lot of people do. And that's something I talk about in my FUD video is taking the path of least resistance. I just wanted to get started on my store and I wanted to open and I want to sell candles, but the closer I've gotten to that, I've actually had to rein myself back in and understand that there's so much more I needed to take a look at. I wasn't quite ready. And even though I had a few candles and a few scents that I thought worked beautifully, I needed to do some double checking because I didn't want to put that one out, but it could have been better. And if I would have just tested one more wick and I didn't take the advice at first when I started doing this, which I'm going to give to you now, test three. What do I mean by that? That means take the same vessel, put the exact same mixture into all three of them. So the exact same batch of wax and fragrance oil, and then use three different wicks because in this test, I want to test for wick. Now, what if I want to make a different change and I've realized that I've got my vessel and that wax and the wick, do I still need to test? The answer is yes. Just because it works with fragrance X does not mean it's going to work with fragrance Y. I might need a different wick with fragrance There's a Y. a lot that goes into testing that it's really hard to fathom when you start making candles of what you need to test and why. Until you actually see it and test it and do it and understand it, it can be daunting. Especially when you start thinking, oh my gosh, I have to allow for X amount of money for my business expenses to be able to test. Research and development. Companies spend thousands and millions on research and development. And you're a business, you're a small business, so you're not going to spend that kind of money, but you still have to invest in yourself. You have to invest in your product. You have to invest in testing. So that's it. That's what I have for you today. 
Hopefully you learned something new. If you're new to the candle making industry or you're newer like I am, maybe today you saw something that you didn't know, or maybe you got some clarification on something you didn't quite understand. Either way you look at it, hopefully you picked up something today and you enjoyed yourself at the very least. Don't forget to click on that subscribe button. Click on the little bell to be reminded as new videos come out, there is so much more to talk about and discover, especially as I get closer to actually finalizing my six to eight cents to open my store. I am so excited about we're this close. So stand by, join along, and until next time, like I always say, live your life out loud. Bye.